And new son of products, a new son of products. I'm gonna play with the new son of products. Hi, I'm Matt, and this is Not Enough Tech. Son of was kind enough to hook me up with their new releases, and these are 4CH and 4CH Pro. R3. I think R stands for revision and this is third revision, at least that's how I'm going to call them. So in this video I'm going to focus on what's great about these and what's so not great. I guess let's get started. And I'm going to start with a physical overview. Both products have a new redesigned case, uh, so there are more round corners for your personal safety obviously. There are also redesigned clips that are working I think a little bit better, so you will have no problem mounting this on the Dean rails. And probably my favorite change till, um, till now is they got rid of the quick release clamps. Now you have proper screw terminals, so if you use the soft wires, you'll have no problems connecting wires whatsoever. They even included a screwdriver in case your screwdriver doesn't fit the holes. Awesome. Everything else looks in place, so let's talk about Sono 4CH first. And then we're going to move to 4CH Pro and talk about differences. The electrical properties stay the same, so the Sonoff is still capable of pushing 10 amps through a single channel with a limit of 16 amps across four different channels, which means on average you will be pushing at 4 amps per channel, which equals to about 800 watts uh, in UK because we're using 220 volts. And that's okay, I'm not planning on automating my Hoover anytime soon, so that gives you a, a quite a big range to connect different devices without overloading this relay. Please be aware that the included manual shows you how to hook up a motor to it, however the device isn't recommended for inductive load due to the rush current, so if you're using any motors uh, with Sonoff S4CH please check uh, the power rating and do not exceed them to stay safe. Before I take a peek inside, I'd like to talk about the terminals on 4CH in particular. That's spread between two sides of the board, which makes connecting wise quite annoying because you have to strip them back quite a bit. Now inside you'll see the relay board and there's a couple of changes on the relay board. Now on the other side of it you'll find ESP which is now integrated into main PCB. It's a ESP8285 and it's located in the center of the board. Uh, you'll see the antenna from that as well. Now there are four buttons which are linked to GPIO 0, GPIO 9, GPIO 10 and GPIO 14 and also there are four different relays that are connected to GPIO 12, 5, 4 and 15. LEDs that are present on the board itself are linked to the relay signal so they cannot be decoupled if you pay close attention, they have indications for the GPIO pins as well. Now there is a developer pin which we can use for hacking and there is a GPIO 2, uh, VCC 3.3 volts, RX, TX and ground exposed with a standard pitch, which means you can put a header on it. So let's move on to 4CH Pro. Electrical properties are very similar. You've still got four decoupled or dry contacts which you can use to connect all devices. Now dry contacts meaning that you will be able to connect DC or AC power with the different specifications as the relay's power isn't being fed through the device itself. Now the device can be powered by AC or can be powered by DC and there is a change in the DC voltages on R2 it was 5 to 24 volts uh, on R3 series the minimum voltage requirement is 9 volts be mindful of that if you're going to replace your R2 board relay rating stays the same so you can push up to 10 amps of current through a single uh, channel with 40 amps of current throughout entire board now be mindful that uh, the, in a similar way as with 4CH you have to pay extra attention to inductive current because it can actually damage the relays so be mindful of that and stay within the power requirements for rush current. Inside the relays have a physical separation for increased safety and you'll find a similar layout. ESP is located in the middle, this is also ESP8285. Next to it there is a dev access with pins exposed, now you'll see the ground TX, RX, 
3.3 volts VCC and also pin label as SDA, which suggests I2 square. However, this is in fact connected to GPIO 2. Another difference on this board is the presence of RF for your connectivity. The pinout for the button is the same, so we've got a 0, GPIO 9, GPIO 10 and GPIO 14 for buttons. For relays we have GPIO 12, GPIO 5, GPIO 4 and GPIO 15 for the last relay. In the same way, LEDs are being marked with respective GPIO pins and they connected to a signal pin. It's an RF, so you can link RF remote to it. Hold the button for the respective channel for a couple of seconds until you see the pink light, release it and then press the button on your remote. You can activate the board as well using Sonoff RF bridge. When triggering it from the remote, remember to hold the button for about a second to make the relay trigger. To clear the remote, hold the button slightly longer to see two pink blips and then press the button that you want to clear from the channel. You can pair up to four different remotes per channel, so that's 16 buttons for a single channel, and you can mix and match channels as well. This means you can have a single button triggering two different relays. Inching and interlocking has been moved from hardware side of things to a software, so in the new EWILink app, you will have to access the app to set up interlocking, if that's your thing, or inching settings. Now inching, now it's available up to one hour, moving from 16 seconds per channel in R2 series, and interlocking uh, will cut off several functions, including timers. And speaking of timer, there is still this annoying limit of eight timers and schedule in total. However, you can have, I think, up to 20 different timers uh, all together, providing only eight of them are currently active. Both devices also come with LAN mode. However, the biggest disappointment so far is lack of support for DIY mode 2.0. If you're interested in what DIY mode 2.0 is, I have a video explaining why I was getting excited about this. Now, I've emailed ITIT about this and unfortunately they confirmed that they do not have plans for DIY 2.0 to be implemented into 4CH and 4CH Pro, which is, well, let's face it, that's disappointing. You'll end up flashing these devices pretty soon and that's probably going to be my next video. I guess it's nice to see some of guys iterating with their products. I'm sure the list of features and demands that comes out from DIY users like myself is long and hard to meet, but I hope in the future some of uh, products will come with DIY mode enabled by default. For now, it gives me an opportunity to run the next video in which I'm gonna show you how to flash the Smoton 4CH and 4CH Pro R3 edition, which should be interesting. Thanks so much for watching guys, if you follow me enough you know what to do, however if you're new, uh, bear in mind I do not have a posting schedule and I write articles without videos as well, so it's best to follow me on a social media of your choice to get a notification whenever something is out. You know how YouTube works and notifications and everything, thousands of different YouTube channels taught you that I'm not going to be one. For now, I'm just going to say bye. Take care. You need to polish them, because I'm Polish. So, if you want to get notified, consider following me or... I'm <laughs> out of breath. <laughs> I went to collect the parcel, I've got a new microphone, and I'm out of breath. <laughs> Safe. Okay.